Hi friends! So, first things first, I'm sure you're all wondering why I'm wearing a green t-shirt when I normally wear black. Basically, um, I didn't feel like changing out of my pajamas today, so deal with it. Anyway, um, so what I wanted to talk about today is, um, books. Basically, I went to a bookstore the other day and um, they were doing this thing where you could donate a book to a school or something like basic you basically you pay a couple bucks for this book and they send it to some kind of program for children I don't really remember what it's called but anyway um one of the books that you could choose to get to donate was a book from the Guardians of Gahul series, which I really, really like. Um, and that's mainly what I wanted to talk about today, because I really like stories that personify animal characters, I guess the best way to put it. Um, like Guardians of Gahul, it has a bunch of owls that are kind of like people, but then they have other animals like um, they're not exactly like people because they don't have, like, technology or anything. Um, they're still afraid of snakes and, like, other things that can eat them. Um, but they're kind of personified because they have their own society in a way. And, um, and I think that kind of thing is interesting where, um, they give animal characters their own sort of world to live in but they still behave like that animal um another example is the mouse guard comic book series which i collect because it's like my favorite comic book series and i read it a lot and um you know I just, I really like that because, um, called Mouse Guard, obviously, you can kind of grasp what it's about. Um, it's like the Templar Knights, but as mice. <laughs> it's really cute. Like, the entire world is kind of set in a medieval-esque kind of world. Um, I don't think it's necessarily Earth, per se, but it's Earth-like. And again, they have snakes, they have um, birds of prey that would eat mice, and they're all threats to these mouse guard characters. And they have their own society, like they have a queen, um, they have armor and weapons, like they use swords and axes and stuff to fight off these predatorial animals and um, they have their own kind of government because um, there's some sort of story um, where the queen is like she's telling off this other mouse and I don't know it's just interesting that they added like politics in it too but um I was at the comic book store in my area the other day and um, I mentioned, hey, I really like the Mouse Guard series. Can you recommend me another series that has all animal characters but in their own kind of society? And they were like, oh yeah, read this. It's like called Autumn Teeth. Hang on, I'll look it up online real quick. <laughs> Let's see, Autumn, is it Tooth and Claw or something? Tooth and Claw. Ah, the Autumn Lands Tooth and Claw. I was close. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I read like half of the first graphic novel because I was kind of in a hurry that day so I could only sit down and read a little bit but um, it was really interesting but it was different 
than the other stories. Um, with Guardians of Gahul and Mouseguard, um, the animals still kind of act like the animals that they are. And it's usually just one species that is being personified. With this one, it's a bunch of different animals um, from all different parts of the world. Um, just And they don't really act animalistic. They're like extremely personified. They have their own society and everything, but they act more like people than the animals that they are. So, and it's a lot more brutal than the other two series as well. Like, um, there's so much, like, death. <laughs> I mean, not to say that there isn't death in Mouse Guard and Guardians of Kahul. There actually is, and it's very sad when it happens. But this one, it's not necessarily so sad as it is shocking, because, like, there's this part where this wizard society, they live in the clouds, and then they fall to Earth because they used up so much magic on this one, like, summoning ritual. And when they hit the ground, just complete devastation. All the buildings fall over, and there's, like, carcasses of a bunch of animals everywhere, and, uh, there's just some really brutal imagery where there's, like, blood and organs and stuff coming out it's it's pretty nasty but you know um i'm into some pretty nasty stuff sometimes um there's a limit though i don't really like organs so much i'm okay with blood but organs like a little bit's fine like this one i could kind of stand it because it had a more uh cartoon-esque kind of art style it was still very realistic uh, especially with the animals. They all looked very much like the animals that they are. Um, but it didn't really look real to see the carnage. Whereas with some other stuff, it's just like, ugh, <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah, anyway, I'm going on too much about <laughs> the gore. But I found it really interesting. It was a different take on uh, those kinds of stories that I like, where they didn't really act like the animals. They just acted more like people, but with animal bodies. I don't really know how to explain it. And they didn't really have animal bodies anyway. Like, they were kind of human-esque in a way. Like... There's this one character who is an owl. So you expect the owl to be smaller than the warthog, but he's taller and he's got like a human shaped body, but like feathers and talons and like the owl head. But he, his overall, like, his back is erect like people's are and. He's got, like, the wide shoulders that men have, and I don't know. It's really, really weird, but I like it. It's, like, a different art style, and... <clears throat> Sorry, I'm not sure why my voice sounds so strange today, but... Um, yeah, I, I really enjoy it, though. It's an interesting story. It's very... I wouldn't really say complex, but... Um, it has some deep ideas in there about, like, how the wizard society saw themselves above everyone else, and so when they do finally fall to Earth, of course, the animals that live on the ground despise them because of the way that they were being treated, and so there's a little bit of social commentary in there, and I like that. So, um... Anyway, I didn't really talk about books in general, I just talked about animal books. I'm sorry for that, but, um, I guess I'll just call this vlog animal human books? I don't know. We'll see. I can't call it animal books because then people might think it's, like, books that are educational about animals. Which I like those too, but I'll talk about them another time, maybe. 
especially zoo books. Yeah, I should talk about zoo books at some point. I love zoo books. Anyway, <laughs> I've rambled on too much. So, um, see you later and tell me about some of the animal books that you like. Not educational animal books. Animal books that have animals in there in society, like the Warrior series or something. Anyway, bye!